G'day everyone, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers National Cyclone Video Update today, the 24th of February 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. We can see currently a fair bit of low pressure around the northern parts of Australia. We've got a fairly active trough across the Pilbara and across the northwestern parts of WA. We've got another fairly active trough across NT and a less active trough system across Queensland. There just no there is just no infeed of moisture into this trough in the Queensland, so it's only producing extremely isolated activity. We've also got ex-tropical cyclone Marsha, who has not died and is uh, refusing to die at the moment, and is going to push in a northerly direction, also linked to a trough system through the South Pacific region. Looking at the Bureau of Meteorology's four-day forecast charts, we can see that Marsha will continue ex-Marsha, I won't call her by the name, just thank you in case there's a bit of confusion. X Marsha is expected to continue to drift to the north and then is expected to drift eastwards towards the uh, Vanuatu to New Caledonian region. We can see that the tropical cyclone formation potential is non-existent in the Coral Sea and so I wouldn't be too worried about Marsha redevelop X Marsha redeveloping any time soon, if at all. Now, over the northwestern parts of the continent, we do have that active trough system creating uh, not favourable conditions, but reasonable conditions for thunderstorms across the water, uh, but at none of those are expected to organise in the near future. Nothing in the NT in the official outlook, nothing in, for Queensland in the official outlook, other than the mention of X Marsha, and nothing much on the WA update either, with uh, X Tropical Cyclone Lamb dissipating as he heads southwards. Interesting little record that was broken, uh, according to the Bureau of Meteorology, the first time in recorded history in Australia that two severe tropical cyclones crossed the Australian coastline on the same day. That's pretty freaky, especially considering we haven't seen a, a tropical cyclone come anywhere near the continent up until that moment. The reason behind all of this cyclone activity, well, for subscribers, it should come as no surprise. We were talking about this uh, about a week and a half ago. A slow-moving tropical disturbance called an equatorial Rosby wave was the reason. And uh, we mentioned that this equatorial Rosby wave was actually quite strong and uh, it was going to create havoc no matter where you were in the northern parts of Australia. So it has nothing to do with the MJO. The MJO is currently weak and almost non-existent. However... We need to look a little bit longer term, and while the next three or four days are looking at absolutely no cyclone potential around, there is a sign that on some computer models we will see the MJO redevelop in seven or ten days, and that will increase the chance of tropical cyclone activity, particularly as we head to day 10 plus. So we're looking at 10 to 21 days' time, the possibility of maybe a couple of cyclones around both sides of the continent, both on the east and west. Now, we'll talk a bit more about that for the subscribers. You would have known that in your subscriber updates. We'll talk a bit more about that in the public update once that becomes a little bit more clear, because at the moment, as, as the bomb says here, there are two schools of thought. One school of thought says absolutely nothing going on for the next few weeks. Another school of thought says that other, that what I just mentioned, two cyclones opposite sides of the continent. Too much doubt, too much variability, and we don't want to go scaremongering the public, so we're not going to talk about them. And we can see clearly here a fairly low pressure continuing to dominate the northern parts of the continent around about mid to late next week. And that would be around about the time we will start to see the real signs of any developments if they happen. You won't see them yet. You won't see them on any publicly available model just yet. But uh, you might start to see them as we go into next week, early next week. Thanks to weatherzone.com.au, we can see that tomorrow's rainfall uh, overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, we are expecting to see some showers and storms across the northern parts of Queensland here. Possibly some isolated shower and storm activity along inland parts of Queensland, but as I mentioned, there's no real moisture feed into these. You can see extropical cyclone lamb, uh, extropical cyclone lamb, extropical cyclone marsha expected to be moving in that northerly direction, as I mentioned, out to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Also across the Northern Territory, we're expecting to see enhanced thunderstorm activity around that southwest Gulf Country, Barclay District, uh, some isolated stuff more around the northern top end coast and the northwest coast. Over to WA, fairly active trough system creating showers and storms across the Pilbara. Also, fairly active period of weather coming up for the Kimberley and into the interior parts of WA. As we go into the next day, on to 
Thursday. So that's this is the rainfall expected tomorrow and up to Thursday morning. We can see a clearance in Queensland. Most of the rain now heading further to the north. So anywhere sort of uh, Cairns, Innisfail, northwards is expecting to see showers and storms, particularly over inland areas. Some of those might make it to the coast, but really we're focused on the inland areas there for that activity. A uh, little bit of a clearance here around the central parts of the Territory. Most of the activity now heading up to the northern half of the Northern Territory. Um, also po possibly seeing an increase here in the northwestern top end of some shower and storm activity. And you can see a fair bit of rain activity occurring out here in the Arafura Sea, uh, but nowhere near the actual mainland. You can see Tropical Cyclone, ex-Tropical Cyclone Marsha not intensifying in any way. Moving again to the north or slightly northeast there. And once again, you've got a very active period of weather coming up for the Pilbara and Kimberley as that trough system is a little bit more active than we're normally used to. Now, as we go into day three, so now we're looking at Thursday and into Friday morning, we can see tropical ex-tropical cyclone Marsha tracking away to the northeast. We can see a big clearance here along the Queensland coast. Some isolated showers and storms on the southern border ranges of Queensland and then some fairly strong storm activity on the western peninsula as those southeasterlies try to push through, uh, push some dry air and come in uh, come into contact with some fairly moist air coming in from the Gulf. So we could see a fairly big enhanced line of storms here across the western peninsula on the Thursday night and into Friday morning maybe. Uh, we've got isolated showers and storms continuing along that inland trough line, but once again, not being fed by much moisture, so not to, not expecting to see heavy rainfall totals there. However, up here to the northwest, we might see some heavier rain totals. Across the Northern Territory, we're starting to see more stronger storms and, and heavier rain totals from those storms. And once again, fairly active period of weather, although most of the storm activity will be inland of the Pilbara on the Thursday uh, Thursday night, but we're going to see fairly active and enhanced. It's going to be it's going to be lighting up like a Christmas tree here on Thursday night across WA. Don't forget to head to our website ozcyclonechasers.com.au to watch our latest video from Tropical Cyclone Master. It's a seven and a half minute clip, and it's really a bit of a best of what we got in terms of some video footage. Also, tomorrow at some point, we will be updating the public chase page to let you know what the maximum and minimum parameters were from our weather station as well. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, uh, if you want some in-depth graphs and statistics, uh, become a subscriber and we'll give them to you in the current subscriber chase page here on the right-hand menu. You'll get some in-depth graphs, statistics and tables about all the environmental parameters at the time. Thanks very much for watching, folks, and we'll talk again on Friday afternoon or evening.